Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Coraline. So Coraline is directed by Henry Selick, the same director of James and the Giant Peach and The Nightmare Before Christmas. And before I actually do review Coraline, I'm actually going to go ahead and give the spotlight to Nate from his channel, Stupid Beagle Reviews, where he will not only give his thoughts, but he will actually go ahead and give you guys the plot synopsis. So, Nate, take it away, man. Hey everyone, I'm Tony, aka 22 Tiger Dude's channel. My name is Nate, and I'm from the Stupid Beagle Reviews YouTube channel. That's my channel. But, Tony asked me to be here to help him review a movie called Coraline. So, I'm here. Hello. So Coraline is a stop-motion animated movie, but directed by Henry Selick, from the company Laika. It's Laika's first film. And this movie stars Dakota Fanning, and it's basically about this kid called Coraline who has very neglectful parents, parents that pay no attention to her or care for her. She basically moves to a new house with them, and in this house, she discovers this little door that at nighttime will lead her to this world. It's a whole different world where everything is better. Life is better in this world. It seems all wonderful. But throughout the movie, we soon find out that it's actually not a very good place to be. There are some bad things about going there. So Coraline is actually a movie I've wanted to review for a while on my own channel, so it's really cool that I got to do it on Tony's channel because this movie is one of my favorite animated movies of all time. When I was a younger kid, I saw this movie and it basically just creeped me out. I was really scared of it. And I kind of just erased it from my brain. I didn't really like it back then. I kind of just tried to take it out. But then when I was older, I watched it again and I appreciated it when my brain was more developed. I saw it as an incredible piece of art. And it's one of my favorite animated movies of all time. And animation is one of my favorite genres of all time. So Coraline is probably up with some of my favorite movies of all time, in all, in all honesty. And this was the first movie that Laika ever made. Later on, they made Paranorman, Box Trolls, and the most recent Kubo and the Two Strings. I adore the stuff Laika has done. I absolutely love their work. I love all their movies, except for Box Trolls, which I just thought was alright. But all their other movies, I absolutely adore. And Coraline is my favorite out of all all of them. Henry Selleck was absolutely the right guy to direct this movie because he is so good at directing this film. He also directed Nightmare Before Christmas. I love the guy. I want Henry Selleck to do more movies because he hasn't directed that many movies. I want to see more movies from him. This film is about the innocence of a child. It's about the innocence and naiveness, I don't think that's a word, that a child can go through at this age. It's about enjoying what you have in life and it's about being careful what you wish for which is also on the cover. There are so many deep themes about Coraline, and it's such a good film. It's a dark and creepy movie, but it's also very, very deep and incredibly mature. Dakota Fanning does an awesome job as Coraline in this movie. She's a really good voice actress in this film, surprisingly, because I'm pretty sure Dakota Fanning's still pretty young. Whenever I hear her voice in this movie, I'm constantly like, oh, hey, it's Tom Cruise's daughter from War of the Worlds. Screw you, Justin Chatwin. She does a really good job voicing Coraline in this movie, and Coraline is a very likable character because she goes through situations that kids can relate to. Every kid relates to a lot of situations that Coraline goes through in this movie, and her innocence and her youth is shown very well in this film, in the character of Coraline, and she's such a likable character, and her parents are the absolute worst! You hate them! throughout this movie because they are so neglectful and mean to her. Like, she'll just be trying to get their attention, she'll just be talking to their, her mom or her dad, and they'll just be like, Go away, Coraline, I'm trying to work! Just get away from me! Throughout this movie, you constantly hate these parents, and you want to see Coraline have something better in her life. And then when she finally goes to the dreamlike world, you're like, Hey, this is better for her. I'm glad that she's getting what she deserves. But then in your head, you're also sort of realizing, yeah, this is too good to be true. This could become really bad later on. Another thing I love about this movie is the dark, creepy atmosphere it has. It has such a dark, creepy, Halloween-like atmosphere. It's so creative and dark and creepy, and I love 
all of it. It's so, so well done. The stop motion animation, which is an art form I love, was handled really well in this movie. It's one of the most mind-blowing art forms ever because they just take these clay figures and they slightly move them, slightly move them, take a picture, slightly move them, take another picture. It's insane the amount of work goes into this art form and it works really well for this film. I feel like the stop motion animation really aided to the creepy, unsettling tone that this movie is supposed to give off. I love CGI animated movies, but it's really nice to once in a while see a stop motion animated film because there are some really incredible stop motion animated films and this movie shows the peak of what stop motion animation can do. There are so many creative things in this movie. Like, the people who wrote this movie are geniuses. This is such a work of art, the writing that was done in this movie, and the story that this movie gives off. This movie constantly has a dreamlike quality in it. Nothing seems normal. It all seems like something that would happen in a dream. It all seems really crazy. Like, the really strange character, the two fortune teller women, and the, uh, the weird Russian guy. The characters in this movie are so strange and weird and they're sort of the characters you might see in a dream. And I love strange things. There are so many movies that are bizarre and strange that I love and Coraline does that so well. I mean, this is coming from a guy who's one of his favorite things on YouTube is the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared series. <laughs> so, I love weird things and Coraline really shows the weirdness of cinema, basically. There are also quite a bit of humor in this movie. It's not just dark and creepy. There are a lot of funny moments that really do pander to the kids that are watching this movie. Even though this movie is creepy and weird, they do have some family elements spread throughout it. And I know a lot of kids don't really like this movie, but I do think it's one of those movies when you're a kid, you don't really understand it, and then when you get older, you're like, this is a masterpiece. In all honesty, there's not really much you can say about Coraline without giving spoilers, because if you haven't seen Coraline as a film, there are so many things that are unknown while going in. And it's so impressive to see those things unfold in this film, because it's such a remarkable piece of art, and Coraline is a masterpiece. It is such an incredible, amazing film, like is best in my opinion, and it's one of the best animated movies ever made. It has to be in my top five animated movies of all time because Coraline is truly a work of art and I love it. I'm gonna give Coraline an A+. Plus. <laughs> Thanks for having me on here, Tony. It's been a while since I've done this. It's been almost a year, which is kind of insane, but you've been a good friend to me for all that time, so thanks a lot, Tony. You are the man, and I will let you review this movie now, which is probably what everyone wanted to see in the first place. Go, Tony! Thank you so much, Nate, for reviewing Coraline. So Coraline is a very imaginative film. It's a film I would honestly say I loved. I really do love Coraline. It's very well directed by Henry Selick, who did direct James and the Giant Peach and The Nightmare Before Christmas. And of course, this is not his first time directing stop motion. Stop motion is one of the most creative things you could use when you create an animated film. And I feel like when it comes to the stop motion, they really do use that to their full advantage. The stop motion in Coraline is truly tremendous. The characters move so fluidly, and just the stop motion in itself, the overall animation, the details, it looks colorful. It just looks so bright and beautiful. Even when the scenes do get dark, the animation, it does a great job of still staying quite colorful, but getting a little bit dim as the film goes along. And I just thought that was a very interesting choice of the film to use. And the funny thing about this film is that when you start off with it, it actually does start off as this very light movie but then as it's going on and on and on it gets darker and darker which was really risky 
when you really look at it. But I thought the risk of making this film very dark is what made it so engaging and so interesting. I'm going to say, without spoiling anything for those that haven't seen this film, once you get to the present scene, I think that's when the dark tone honestly really started to kick in with Coraline because I feel like everything before that present scene, everything was honestly pretty much lighthearted. So that really did set up the rest of the movie with its very dark tone. As far as voice performances, I feel like everyone does such a great job of lending their voices. Dakota Fanning, she's really great as Coraline. I feel like Dakota Fanning really did fit so well for this kind of character. This girl that really isn't having the best life because of her and her parents having to move somewhere. She's not with her friends. The parents are obviously very neglectful. I don't think anyone could have voiced Coraline like Dakota Fanning because I feel like with the voice like that, it definitely does carry with the character. Terry Hatcher as the voice of Coraline's mother, both when it comes to the normal mother and this dark, terrifying mother holy crap but she brings that terrifying tone to her character so well it's because of her voice performance you really believe that this terrifying mother and this other world was just up to no good. John Hodgman as Coraline's father, both in the present world, the real world, and the other side of the world. He did a really great job. Keith David as the voice of the black cat. I thought he really lended his voice very well to that character. And for the scenes that you have with him and Coraline together, were definitely very intriguing scenes. I loved how Coraline and personally that cat would interact back and forth and how they even formed this nice, simple friendship. They slowly become friends as the movie goes along and that was one of the things I personally do really love about Coraline. And Ian McShane as Mr. Babinski, he was freaking great. He was so funny as his character, just so energetic. It's a character that I just personally really liked in this film. Just looking at this world of Coraline, looking at all of these strange things that happen in this film is really quite breathtaking. The score in Coraline is also absolutely breathtaking. It is truly music to my ears when I hear the score of Coraline because it just sounds so beautiful. When it's really lighthearted, it's so soft and soothing and relaxing, but then when things get very dark in this film, the music gets louder and louder and more suspenseful. Whether it's light or dark, the music throughout fits Coraline so perfectly. I actually did like the kid that was, I guess you could say, stalking Coraline. His name is YB. I thought he was honestly a very interesting and fun character. And just the dark turns Coraline definitely takes was very impressive. Coraline, hands down, has one of the craziest climaxes I've honestly seen in the film in general. It's not just animation, just in film in general. It is one of the craziest, most darkest, even scariest climaxes I've seen. Like, wow, that's really impressive for something that's categorized as a family film, but it definitely worked in my opinion. And that's why I really commend this film for taking such risky turns, but all those risky and dark turns that it took, it really did pay off. Now, as far as problems do go with Coraline, however, I will say that there are these two characters. They're not in this film that much so it's not like they really take away that much of the enjoyment of the film or anything but these characters named Miss Forcible and Miss Spink uh, they're the women with the large breasts I wasn't really too crazy about those characters, didn't really care too much for them. There is one scene with them that I'm surprised that this film actually got away with. It's a scene dealing with this play and they're actually naked like 
I couldn't believe they actually got away with something like that for a rated PG film. But it was a funny scene, and that's the thing, this film definitely did have some funny moments. But those characters I personally just did not really care for. Also, around the one hour mark, there is a scene that basically does set up the climax, and those that have seen this film know exactly what I'm talking about. This one scene sets up the climax, and when this certain scene happens, I felt it was predictable. And the last problem I did have with Coraline is that everything in this film seemed like it was about to wrap up. Everything was wrapping up into a nice bow. It really felt like the movie was about to end. And then it's all like, nope, we have to do something else before this film ends. Even though it felt like this movie was just about to end, there has to be an extra something that actually did feel quite rushed in my opinion. So here is another few minutes of these characters having to stop the certain crazy situation. Then let's actually wrap up the movie. And it was predictable too that they were gonna go in that kind of direction. I was even calling it. So it was honestly kind of rushed in the last five minutes as well but honestly you guys I loved Coraline I think Coraline is a fantastic animated film I think it is really terrific it's very well made it's just so well animated the stop motion is still tremendous it's no surprise considering this is from Leica Studios Leica Studios just has breathtaking stop motion and in terms of their animation it's just so colorful and you really do feel like you're in this world so I'm gonna give Coraline three and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Coraline. And I want to give a huge thank you to Nate, aka Stupid Beagle Reviews, for coming here to review Coraline. He's a very great dude, you guys. He has an awesome channel. He loves movies. I highly recommend his channel. So if you want to check out Nate's channel, I will, of course, leave a link in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!